In October of 2021, after a much-awaited release, Kerry Fukunaga's No Time to Die was released in theaters. This was to be Daniel Craig's final Bond film. I sat down in the theater to watch the nearly three-hour-long film, and to my surprise, it became my new favorite movie. The visuals, the story, the guns, and of course, the watch. Omega, alongside Daniel Craig, teamed up to make a perfect final Bond watch. Cased in 42 millimeters of titanium on a matching titanium mesh bracelet, Bond's final watch was perfect. So perfect that I felt the need to get the watch. At the time, I was unaware of the price associated with Omega watches, and this particular watch being made in titanium increased the retail price to just under $10,000. I was shocked. I thought only watches like Rolex and AP could be that much money. The most I had spent on a watch up to that point was $300 for an Apple Watch SE. I needed to know why this watch cost so much money, and there the deep dive began. Through my searching and discovery, I came across an Adrian Barker video talking about why the No Time to Die Seamaster was nearly perfect. I watched more of his videos and saw that he had a white dial Seamaster. I fell in love again. The white ceramic dial with the contrasting black ceramic bezel was so eye-catching. The red Seamaster text and the second hand tip added the perfect amount of color to the watch. I found my watch. My goal for 2023 was to get the watch, and 23 days into the first month of the year, the stars aligned and I found one for a great price. This was my birthday gift to myself. Purchased on the 23rd for my 23rd birthday, I was over the moon with love for this watch. One year later, these are my thoughts on my Omega Seamaster Professional 300M. Alrighty, it has been one whole year owning my baby, my Omega Seamaster. And today we're finally going to get to talking about my thoughts on owning this watch for one year. I wrote down some notes as to just a few key points of things that I really like and things, a few things that I dislike. As the introduction said, the white ceramic dial was probably the first thing that really drew me into this particular watch. I already knew that I loved the design elements because they are transferred over from the No Time to Die Seamaster, but on this particular watch, the white dial with the black bezel and the red accents, all three of those things combined just make it so aesthetically appealing to me and it drew me in really quick when I was watching those videos on this watch. I kid you not, I would watch either Adrian Barker or Chisholm Hunter's video on this watch probably five times a week on the lead up to me buying this watch because I was just so, so excited about it and I knew that I needed this watch. Some of the first things that I came to really love about this watch were the skeleton hands and the helium escape valve, both of which are kind of controversial parts about the Seamaster, but to me the Seamaster is not the Seamaster with either of those elements. If you took off the helium escape valve, it wouldn't look right. And if you put on a different handset, it would you could get away with it, but it just would not be the same in my opinion. I personally love how legible the skeleton hands are, how when you look at a glance at the time, it's very fat and wide and takes up a good bit of surface area on the dial, but because they're skeletonized, you can still see through them. So if let's say the time was 2.30, the minute hand would be covering the date window. But because it's skeletonized, you can look through and see the date. The hands themselves kind of are polished at an angle. And so as the light touches the hands differently, you can see half of the reflection of whatever the light source is on each hand as it rotates. And it kind of is like a half and half angle, the way that the light reflects. I don't know if I'm even wording that at all correctly, but the way that the hands reflect the light is just something that I can sit and just look at. I actually probably, when I'm wearing this watch, I look at the watch more just to look at the design elements rather than checking the time. But to be fair, I'm a watch nerd and most of us probably do that anyway. I really, really like the loom on this watch. This watch is a dive watch and so obviously you think it would have good loom and it does have good loom, the only thing I will say is that the hands, because they're skeletonized, they don't have a lot of surface area to apply loom to. And so if you're in certain lighting conditions where you can see a light source reflecting off of the white dial, it kind of blocks out the hands and you can't really tell what time it is. 
but that's only in like very particular low lighting. But if you were outside, let's say, and you step into a building and the lights are off, the loom is like a flashlight and you can just see everything with it. I also really like how the minute hand and the bezel pip have green loom and all the other loom around the dial and the hands is like a cyan blue. I think the contrast between those two colors is really cool. What was probably the main reason for me buying this watch apart from the design is the movement on the inside. On the inside, this watch has the Caliber 8800, which is a Meta certified movement made in-house by Omega. It has 35 joules, it beats at three and a half hertz, and it has about a 60 hour power reserve. It is also anti-magnetic to 15,000 Gauss. So essentially all you need to know is you could on paper take this into an MRI with you and it would be just fine. Of course, I will never need anything near what this watch is capable of, but the fact that it has it is just so cool to me. I love that when I put this on my wrist and I walk out the door to go about my day or whatever I'm doing, I don't have to worry about like, oh, I wonder if, if my watch is gonna be able to handle this or I wonder if, I wonder if whatever. You don't have to wonder anything when you wear this watch. You put it on, you go out and it exists and it operates just fine. And that was really what drew me the most towards this watch. The finishing on the movement isn't like Patek Philippe or Alanga and Zuna quality, but it is good enough for what it is and for what you pay. And whenever I'm showing someone who's like new to watches or they don't understand what automatic watch is, one of the things that they usually say is, oh wow, that's a really like pretty looking movement. Like that looks really cool. I like the waves. I like the shine, whatever their non-watch terminology would say. I have absolutely loved wearing this watch for an entire year. I took it boating. I took it hiking. It's been in the snow. It's been in the sun. It's been, it's been a basically everywhere that I have. And there are a few things that I have come to dislike about the watch and that, in my mind, hinder it from being a perfect watch. I'm out in nature today with my Omega Seamaster. I've had this now for eight months at the current moment of filming this, and it is my favorite, favorite watch. In terms of dislikes, there is only one, and it is the date window slash the date wheel. There's quite a bit of space between the date disc and the window of the dial, so if you're looking into the date from a certain angle, you can kind of see a little gap in between and start to see inside the movement. And I just think it, it could have been a lot better, especially for the price that you would pay for the watch. You'd think that they could at least do some kind of something to make the dial and the date window more, like the transition more seamless. I do like that it is at six o'clock making it symmetrical. And I like the font that they use for the, the number of the date, but that little gap in between the dial and the date wheel just, it makes it not perfect. The dive bezel on this watch is unidirectional. It has 120 clicks and the clicks do not sound good. and the grip on the bezel itself is basically non-existent. Unless your fingers are sticky and you can kind of get a good grip on the ceramic portion of the bezel, you're really not gonna be able to twist the bezel around. The bezel has 13 little individual like finger placements kind of things. They kind of go along with the design of the watch and I think they look really good. But on a functionality standpoint, they make the bezel really hard to get a grip on. The only thing I will say that is good about the bezel is that, at least on my particular example, there is zero back play. And being someone that loves when things are really tight and dialed and organized, I will say that is one thing about the bezel that I really like, and it's really the only stipulation I have with a bezel. And the final thing that I am now starting to realize, because it's now winter, is on my mesh bracelet that I got with this watch. I'm currently wearing it on the tightest size, and in the winter months, it starts to fall onto my wrist and fall below my wrist bone, and that drives me insane. I love when my watch is really tight to my wrist, and so when I wiggle and move and do things with my hands, it doesn't get in the way and it's not wiggly wobbly. And unfortunately, in the winter months, my girl wrist shrinks even smaller, and this bracelet does not really fit me in the winter. And so I have to wear it on the rubber strap that it came with or on a spring made NATO strap, which I honestly really, really, really like the way that it looks. I think it's probably the best NATO strap that I've ever tried, but unfortunately it is not the mesh bracelet. The good thing about this watch though is that this has a 20 millimeter lug width. And so when I'm trying on different straps and different bracelets, which I also change all of the time. I think it looks good on a bunch of different straps. Montrose Straps reached out to me to showcase their premium FKM rubber strap. And being the strapaholic that I am, of course I said yes. 
These straps come in a magnetically sealed box and they offer many colors you can pick from. My favorite is this white strap on my Seamaster. I love how this combo looks. They're super comfortable, they're lightweight, and for me the best part is the price to quality ratio. Their straps are $45, so they're super affordable. That's just a hair more than some of your favorite NATO straps. I've purchased some rubber straps in the $30 to $40 price range, and at that price, they're usually made of silicone, which I hate. But this rubber feels like actual rubber and is flexible yet sturdy enough to hold your watch securely. Montro is nice enough to include a discount code if you are a fan of my channel and if you watch these videos. If you use code KDUN, you can get 15% off of these straps, making them even more affordable and accessible. So again, thank you to Montro Straps. These straps are really nice. And of course, the mesh bracelet is the way that I envisioned this watch. It's the way that I knew I was gonna end up with this watch. And to me, this watch is not complete without the mesh bracelet. And that's the end of my notes. I have enjoyed wearing this watch for an entire year. I pretty much have not lost any love for it since the day that I got it. This was the watch of the year for me for 2023. And this is the only watch that I have in my collection that I have bought myself that I will never, ever get rid of. I've been wanting to make this video ever since I got my Seamaster, but I thought I would just wait one year to get my thoughts because your mind kind of changes and you realize things that you didn't know in different seasons of the year. And so January 23rd, when you're watching this video, it has been one year of me owning this watch. And it's my baby and I love it. Again, another quick shout out to Montro Straps who hit me up on Instagram and asked me to do a little showcase of their straps. I'm someone who probably changes the strap out on a watch two to three times a week just because I, to me it's like clothes and like outfits. Your watch has gotta have some different clothes and some different accessories. And I love just having so many options. Thank you again for watching this video. If you're interested in seeing some more watches in the future, subscribe so that you know. And if, it, if you're in a, the financial position, consider getting a Seamaster because they are so sick. Goodbye.